Today we are going to be talking about bread inflation, okay? So I have had three different people that are not even connected in any way come to me and talk to me this week about the cost of bread. Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to Kirstner Farmstead. If you are new here, my name is Kirsty, and today we are going to be talking about bread inflation, okay? So I have had three different people that are not even connected in any way come to me and talk to me this week about the cost of bread. Okay, so I know everything is crazy, um, and we're going to do whatever we can to fight that, right? Okay, so logically, the easiest way to do that is going to be by making our own sandwich bread, okay? So the first thing I wanted to touch on a little bit is that you need, if you're used to like the big name brand fluffy white bread sandwich breads, um, you have to get past the texture of those breads, okay? Because you are never ever going to achieve at home the texture of those breads and this is why, okay? I'm gonna pop up the reason why you will never achieve that. And the reason is chemicals and additives that you cannot get and you cannot put into your own food at home. I mean, maybe somebody has the ability to, but I don't know anywhere that I can buy those ingredients and you probably don't either. So what you need to do is you need to get in the mindset that this is homemade bread. This is not going to be store-bought Wonder Bread, okay? So it is going to be delicious, but in its own way. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to add our milk. We have a cup and a quarter of milk and we're going to add it to our mixer. It's been warmed up. Uh, I just throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds to 110 degrees. Now we are going to add our yeast and we are going to let it bloom for about five minutes before we mix it up. Okay, I had to go dig out my dough hook. <laughs> All right, so we are going to be adding two tablespoons of sugar to our yeast and our milk. And sugar is necessary to feed the yeast. So even if you only put a little bit in, um, it really does help the yeast grow, okay, and activate. So if you don't like refined sugar, you can use, um, a, I would use a little bit less, like a tablespoon and a half of honey, um, or you could use something like stevia, something similar to that. Uh, but you do want some sort of sugar in there. All right, we are going to start our mixer on low. Thank you, buddy. Colt's washing dishes right now. Okay, you guys, so we are going to start adding in our flour. Just a little bit at a time. We have uh, three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You can also use bread flour. We're gonna add in about half of our flour and that's when we're going to add in our salt, okay? You don't wanna ever add in the salt directly onto your yeast and your water because your uh, salt can kill your yeast. Now we're gonna add in salt. Add in our butter, our four tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna stop my mixer and I'm actually going to use my dough scraper to scrape down my bowl. And we're gonna add in the last of our flour. Now we are going to turn that up a notch and we are going to let that knead for about five minutes. Okay, you guys, our dough is ready to proof and what we are going to do is take a little bit of olive oil and just put it in our bowl. You can also use Pam, I just don't keep it on hand, I just use oil. Um, 
and then we are going to take our dough. The dough is very a very soft consistency, and that is what you want for sandwich bread. You want it to be um, as as nice and light and fluffy as possible, right? So you want it to be a soft consistency of a dough to begin with. It'll be pretty sticky. See what I mean by sticky? All right. Okay, so you're gonna take your dough and toss it in the oil so that it's fully coated all around. And then you are either going to take and put a damp tea towel over the top of it and let it sit on your um, counter until it is doubled in size. Or here's another couple options. My stove has a proof option on it, but it doesn't have any, um, it doesn't put any water into the proof setting, so there's no steam. Uh, so what I do is I put a tray of water in a pan, in a, a pan of water in my oven and then put the dough next to it and put it on the proof setting. Um, I actually had a commenter tell me that she uses her light in her oven and that that puts off just a little bit of heat and also you'll want to put water in there with it as well. And then you can, I've also heard of people using their dishwasher. So I'm not sure how that works. I don't have a dishwasher. so but I do know that they say that you can use like a steam setting or something like that. All right, so we will be back when the dough is doubled in size. Okay, you guys, so our dough has clearly doubled in size. Now we are going to knead it and shape it for our pan. So we have about half a cup of flour on the side here. We're not going to use all of it. It's just there if we need it. Now you are going to Pour your dough out onto your floured surface and you are going to fold it over on itself a couple times, okay? Like, I like to pull it and push with my knuckles a little bit. Okay, now we have a loaf. So you have the start of a loaf, right? So what you're going to do is you are going to flatten it out into like a rectangular shape. You want it about the length of whatever pan you are going to be using, okay? So if you have two smaller pans, then I suggest you make two loaves because this will be big enough for two loaves in a nine inch, two nine inch loaf pans. This is, I know I've talked about it before, but these are my Pullman loaf pans. I love them. They make perfect square sandwich bread with the lids, um, but they are absolutely not necessary. You can use whatever pan that you have in your um, cabinet. Okay, so, now you can roll away from you. I like to roll towards myself. So you're gonna take the, uh, the front of your bread and you're gonna pull it and push it in like this with your fingertips. And then you're gonna pull it again and take your thumbs and push it down again. And every time you're sealing the edge, okay? This is a really easy dough to work with because it is nice and soft. It's not super sticky. So it's it's a good beginner dough to work with. All right, now we're gonna kind of like roll it out and make it even. And we are going to take our loaf pan. These Pullman loaf pans do not need to be greased, but if you do have a pan that tends to stick, I would recommend either spraying it with Pam or brushing it with some oil. And we are going to Put our loaf in there, just like that. And we are going to put the lid on and we are going to let it rest. I'm gonna keep mine cracked just a little bit. We are going to let it rest and rise for its second rise while we preheat our oven. We are going to preheat to 350 degrees and then we will get our bread in and we are going to bake it for about 30 minutes until the top is nice and golden brown. All right, so we will be back when that's done. Okay, so you can see our bread has a nice rise on it. Okay, you guys, 30 minutes went past and our bread is a beautiful golden brown. Okay, this is why I love the Pullman loaf pans. You get a perfect square sandwich loaf out of them. I will link, ooh, I almost touched that, you see that? Um, I will link uh, an Amazon link in my description so that you guys can pick one up if you would like one. Uh, I really do think if you are making bread often that it is a great thing to have. If you're not able to buy one right now, that's uh, of course fine and just use whatever you can find. Um, also, thrift stores are great places to, to find baking pans. 
All right, you guys, I hope that this video helped some of you. I hope that you will try to make your own bread because it's really not that hard as you saw today. And I hope that we can beat this inflation together. All right, if you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And as always, have a blessed day. Bye.